Welcome to the Home Ownership Podcast presented by Movementum Realty, located in Hanover, Massachusetts. This series covers all things real estate and the best practices for buying, selling, and owning property. Now here is your host, Sean Maloney. Welcome to episode 211, Why a House is So Expensive in Massachusetts. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Maloney. Thanks for joining me this week. Oftentimes, as a real estate broker that's centrally located in Massachusetts, I get a lot of questions. I do service other states, but because I grew up here in Massachusetts, people often rely on what I'm going to tell them about Massachusetts. Some of the things we're going to talk about in this episode are going to shock you. There's express reasons why Massachusetts is so expensive compared to other states. And there's lots of falsehoods spread by the news that make people bid wrong or be unprepared to win the home of their dreams here in Massachusetts and understand what that really means. The good news is I'm going to break it all down for you in today's episode. So let's get started. First off, Massachusetts is one of the oldest states in the country, if not the oldest. Locally, most of the easier lots have already been developed, leading to a shortage of new land for new construction. So building a home takes certain credentials, right? Each and every town has different rules and regulations that govern what they're allowing to be developed, right? So some might have a 25 foot setback, some might have a minimum lot size of an acre, some might have distances between lot lines of 100 feet, some might have longer wetland delineations, but there's so many different factors that go into developing, right? There's many reasons why they say yes or no. So in states where there's lots of open land and it's undeveloped, you see a lot of large track development, right? You see whole neighborhoods going in, which we used to see 30, 40 years ago. But due to the fact that we're about 400 years old, give or take a few years here, and we've been a village from a community, from the original settlers. So each and every way, all the way from Plymouth Plantation all the way up to larger developments that are happening, like what happened in the Seaport District of Boston, we've seen pretty much anything developable, no matter the expense. People have gone through hoops, loops, and all the other things to get that done. So like I said, all the easier stuff is done, which means everything that happens now is a more expensive version, whether it be more expensive to permit, needs to be on stilts, it has to be built on a cliffside, the groundwork costs a lot of money because we have to blast rock, or there's tons of trees that need to come down, or we need to bring in lots of fill, or we have to get special variances from the federal government because of the distance to the water. All sorts of reasons that the price can get jacked up, but usually speaking, areas with tons of land, the house prices are a little more settled because someone could build a house for what they call maybe stick cost. A lot of us might use that generic term, but the idea of how much does it cost for the wood, how much does it cost for the labor, put that with the land and you have the price that I could build a new home versus buying your existing home. We don't often have that work around here locally in Massachusetts really holding us hostage to what exists. One other factor would be that Boston has a high number of great colleges producing top level student graduates. So Massachusetts attracts in a talent from all over the world when it comes to college. Well, guess what that attracts? It attracts a lot of great employers, which means locally we have a high number of high paying employers looking to capitalize off of that. We have companies like Raytheon, you know, War Defense. We have companies that like TripAdvisor for, you know, online companies. We have companies that have manufacturing. We have companies that have medical backgrounds. We have companies that have science backgrounds. Why? Because they have the high level employees that they need to run these amazing operations. It's not easy to run some of these tech companies or medical companies because it's such fast moving technology that you need the most recent graduates, which means these people coming out of school are making amazing wages. And then they're the bidders, right? So Those of you out there that are doing the harder jobs in the world when it comes to physical labor and getting smaller paychecks, you're bidding versus them. I'm not saying it to pick on you, but the truth is, the more that this continues, the harder Massachusetts is going to be to live for those people that service the other people, which is leading to some of these wage increases that we are seeing. I know landscapers, I know tree guys, I know welders, I know construction guys, and I can tell you all of them are making more money than ever because they need to in order to compete 
for housing, for land to host their business, for the trucks, for all the technology and equipment they need. So it is growing, but it does pull everyone up around it. The fear I always have are the people who don't get involved, the people who say, well, I'm going to wait for it to collapse. <sighs> Man, I worked through lots of different times, including I got into this just right around 2007 and the collapse. And was the collapse real? Yeah, it went way down and everything. But have we way more than recovered since then? Of course we have. And have we changed everything since then? Yes, of course we have. So we have a completely different situation here. And not to say that a collapse can't come or won't come, but it didn't do the same effect it did in other places in the nation, which meant as soon as recovery happened, our prices recovered fastest and the furthest, which again, we're just headed back up to a level that it's unbelievable. I mean, I personally bought a house when I was 23 years old and I paid 250000 for it. And right now I would say it'd be on sale if it went today for somewhere between four hundred and fifty and five hundred and fifty thousand. And that was only a few years back. So I bought my first house. I'm thirty eight years, so it's fifteen years ago. So if you look at the numbers here, yeah, two fifty all the way up to five hundred. So almost doubled. Paying attention to that really matters versus saying to yourself, I'm never getting in because it's gonna go downhill. Well, Right out the waves, most people don't buy a house for one year. They mostly buy it 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Maybe you have to stay a few more years in the house. But buying something that works for you that you can customize and upgrade is really how you find affordable housing locally. And you just do the projects one at a time. And actually, that's great because it makes it your house. You get to choose the customizations, which is a great way to live. And let's go over my third point, which is a severe lack of inventory, which is only exacerbated through the pandemic and beyond. We're in a situation where demand is so high, it leads to multiple offers and bidding wars just to find a place to live. And I just want to beat on that last point and kind of roll it into this one. But people are watching the national news and saying, well, Sean, you know, um, we'll let the market settle and I'll make a bid. Now, it's really not happening locally, right? That is not what's actually going on here. Town of Pembroke, four houses for sale. Three of them have been for sale for multiple days where they're probably off on price or quality. But the rest of them have all sold, right? And now this constantly has been happening for better part of almost four years now where inventory numbers are so low that it's laughable. I ask my friends in other parts of the country, how many houses do you think are for sale in my town? They'll throw out a number 50, 100, 200, 300, depending on how urban of an area and how many houses are local. They throw out different numbers, but the truth is no one ever says four. And because of this, buyers are going out. They're making offers, trying to save money based on what the news says, trying not to put their best foot forward based on what the news says, and not trusting their realtor. Unfortunately, this is something we deal with because there are a lot of people that aren't that great in the industry. I'll admit it. But there are a lot of great professionals. And if you're working with a professional, which you should be, because you have the right to representation, you have the right to choose it. So you should be working with someone like one of our MOVE mentors that can mentor you and guide you on the process. Because when you are, then you can trust them and then you can make the right offer. I can tell you one of the biggest wastes of money I see is the waste of time. Continue to pay that rent, continue to pay all the bills, continue to drive to more houses, continue to take days, time, energy into that versus getting a house and taking those same days, time and energy into rehabbing, fixing, changing and making that house what you want it. Guys, Massachusetts is a tough place to get into the real estate market, but a great place to hold real estate. There's a lot of appreciation and value. If you're thinking about buying and Boston or surrounding communities, Massachusetts, Cape Cod, Western Massachusetts, let us know. We'd love to help you in the process. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast today. If you have any ideas for future episodes, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear your opinion. I appreciate you and have a great week.